So hello, everybody. Thank you again for the invitation. I'm very honored to be talking to you about our organization and about what your work that was done here 70 years ago has led in the present moment in our work. Um, here you can see it's actually a picture from the American Friends Service Commun Community <laughs> Committee uh, from the 50s, some dirty hands that have been done a lot, doing a lot of work. First, I would, uh, maybe some of you are familiar with KVT, but some of you are not, so to introduce quickly who we are and what I am presenting. I will be, I will be telling maybe more what, where Jonathan left earlier, I will be telling what happened afterwards, but I'm presenting one of the strong Finnish women who have been doing constructing work, so <laughs> not having an idea what I have been doing, but I have the energy, so. That's the most important, probably. Okay, so KVT is a voluntary work organization that was established in 1947, just after the Quakers had left Finland and uh, introduced us the good concept of voluntary work camp. Uh, so after the First World War, uh, the, especially the reconstruction work in Lapland, uh, since that year, KVT has organized international voluntary work camps and other voluntary projects in Finland and joined many other projects all over the world. KVT joined the, the network of international voluntary movement, Service Civil International, in 1981. And since then, we have been very actively cooperating with the whole network. Then I'm quite sure that many of you are very familiar with the concept of voluntary work, but I would like to tell what voluntary work is for us. So the main goal, goals of both KVT and SCI have always been actively to support realization of peace in society in a grassroots level and to act against reasons that cause war and conflict. But however, we don't work in conflict areas, but we organize both preventive actions and actions in post-conflict areas. So it is important to underline that we don't do relief or charity work, but we promote, promote volunteering as a way of actively reaching towards common, common goals and peaceful society. And uh, work camps are the main way of us to do it. Then if we don't work there where there is war, what is peace for us? Peace for us is... Uh, not only an opposite of war, but also a realization of people's universal basic needs, identity and well-being, and people's ability to peacefully live together and understand each other. And we, wish, uh, we think that uh, a work camp and voluntary work done together is a very good way of promoting this kind of, this kind of idea. Then to get to the main point, before I will tell you about what happened in Finland. I would like to tell you a bit what happened in an international level before. So uh, the actions and activities of Quakers impressed the founder of SCI, Pierre Serresol, a Swiss gentleman who was very actively in the Swiss peace movement. And the main factors of impression in the pacifist work were its practicality and the independence of any political affiliations, race, nationality, and religion. And these are still the most important values in the SCI work. And uh, SCI was, so Service Civil International, was one of the first organizations which uh, were free of any affiliations in the voluntary work. Uh, and the actual idea of voluntary work camps was born in a meeting of a pacifist organization, the Fellowship of Reconciliation in 1919 in Holland where Serresol was also represented as a delegate of the Swiss peace movement. And that this led to uh, the first work camp, which also led to the establishment of SCI. It was organized, the worst, first work camp was organized in Ver Verdun in 1920, where some of the bloodiest fights of the World War had occurred. This is the picture of Mr. Serresol. And he had this idea that precisely these youngsters who had been fighting and guided towards destructive action should be now recruited, there's a spelling mistake, sorry, <laughs> to peace work. 
And uh, this led to the idea that youngsters with different backgrounds then gathered in these camps to work together towards a better future while learning from each other and the world that they live in. What's the it's Service Civil International, so it's the name of the International Voluntary Work Network. Just ask if I forget to open up some terms. <laughs> And Serasol then managed to spread this work camp movement into United States from Europe too. And uh, slowly it started to spread in, in Europe and all over the world. Then I'm talking a bit what happened 20 years after up in the north with KVT, because KVT only became part of SCI, Service Civil International, in the 1980s. I'm getting my notes a bit from here. <laughs> I forgot to use them. Yes, so the actions and activities of the Quakers, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> here we are. So in 1945, a representative of the American French Service Committee Douglas Steer, that was mentioned earlier, came to Finland in order to estimate the need of help in Lapland. He was welcomed by KVT's future president, Heikki Givaris, who was also mentioned beforehand, who guided him into the current situation of the north of Finland. The work, uh, then the committee sta started some work in Finland and decided to first start distribution of clothes, foods, food in schools, taking care of war widows' children, and then this led to more or organized work camp activities. And there was also the Quakers from Sweden and IAL, which was also mentioned earlier, who were present in starting these activities and later on to, together founding our organization of KVT. And uh, you mentioned earlier that maybe somebody will have a map. I have a map <laughs> of, the, of the first work camps that were held in Finland. So in uh, 46, the wor first work camp was organized in Autti, here in Rovaniemi, or near Rovaniemi at least. I was trying to Google the places, and sometimes they fell in the middle of a lake or something that has been put in into place afterwards. <laughs> uh, and then there was another one in Hirvasvara in Salla. And there was also a third camp, which was organized in Kittila. It was coordinated by IAL Sweden. And you can see there's in green the camps, the three camps that were held in 46. And then in red, the camps from 47 and purplish, the camps of uh, 1948. And the camps were mainly held in Lapland, but in 47, aside of the five camps in Lapland, two camps were organized in central Finland. This was because the office of the, of the uh, American Friends Service Committee was moved into Uvascula. And in this area, the main work was helping the evacuees of Karelia with their housing and fields and taking care of their children. And uh, mainly in this camp, the work was constructing work with the strong women. <laughs> and. Uh, the dis disabled soldiers, widows, and children otherwise wouldn't have had a roof on top of their heads before the cold winter. And I'm actually quite sad because I just realized that there was a camp in Lieksa this, in, in 1948, and I personally held another camp in Lieksa just three years ago because uh, there's a lot of asylum seekers and refugees that have been placed there, and this was like a friendship camp that we brought a lot of asylum seekers and we were doing activities together with the local people there. And I didn't mention that we had a camp also in 48 to help the people for who evacuated from the Karelia area. That would have been a very interesting point, but I actually just got to know this a couple of years ago myself. Next time I will mention it very strongly. Some pictures. There's an there's advertisement of the international work camps. Sorry, I made this with a different program, so some of the boxes are a bit in the wrong place. But I find this very funny, the picture of the international gender equal dish crew that was in 47 or 48 in one of the northern Finland's camp. 
and uh, underneath there, there's a picture of people going to work. Then to remind that the KVT and SCI, as well as the, probably the Quaker camps, were not only about physical work, but a lot about learning. So since the very beginning, there has been educative sessions during the camps and topics that were discussed in these sessions for, for example, Quakers and work camps history, problems of the region or questions of peace and war. And these kind of study parts are still very important in our work, so we don't just go and do physical work, but of course, among the work, we learn from each other and from different cultures, but then we organize study part from the themes of the camp. And here, a very not so official study part in the picture that we're having. It's in Siuntio Reception Center where we had this intercultural day. So we were teaching each other customs of different part of the word, uh, world. And the uh, youngsters who had come from Iraq and Afghanistan and Somalia, for example, could teach us some of their dances. And we were having this was a very fun studying session. I was, I was there. <laughs> So uh, what happened after American Friends Service Committee left Finland is when our organization was born, actually. So in 47, when the aid work ended, the Finnish volunteers still wished to be able to continue the work camp actions. And in the autumn, a meeting was held with the help of IAL again and AFCSC. KVT was established. And there was also Douglas Steer who came to this meeting and uh, was, uh, the service committee was helping KVT a lot in this begin times. So there was both financial help, but most importantly, some motivational and expertise help that you provided our organization. And right after the establishment, KVT started to organize study camp seminars. They were very active. I've been reading some journals. Uh, theme camps, events, regular activities aside of the work camps, and already in 48 there was 34 volunteers that were sent abroad. I'm not actually very sure through which, through which channels they were sent because we weren't yet part of the SCI movement, but they found their ways. <laughs> And then, especially after the increasing participation to the camps abroad, the religious dimension of the organization started to fade away from the activities. And I found some diaries where it was actually discussed a lot. And uh, apparently, it, it was easier to get Finnish youngsters in the work when it was, I would maybe use the term like, and it was Op more open to the Finnish youngster community, but it was strongly emphasized that religious activities were always welcome, but it, wasn't, it just wasn't started from the behalf of KVT. And actually an interesting point of view that I just realized that there has been a, we have been cooperating a lot with churches and religious organizations, especially through global education work that we have been doing. But there is a big amount of people who have been studying religion in the universities that somehow find their ways in KVT, myself included. I study comparative religion in the university, so it's still somehow used as a, maybe one of the most important tools in understanding different cultures and our peace work. Here um, I find, I actually I have a KVT did 20 years ago almost a history book of fifth for 50 year anniversary. And um, most of the material that I'm talking about since I wasn't there, obviously, I wish that you don't think so that I was there in 47. <laughs> so I've done my history work <laughs> and uh, most of the information I found from this history book. And I was so, we have a lot of material in our archives and I was so happily going through the archive that I actually forgot to bring the book, but <laughs> that exists. I have a lot of material that is downstairs. And also maybe some of your friends, there was Johanna Saresvo who was mentioned, who uh, 
his, her family brought the material that she had been collecting all her life from the work camps that are there in the archives of KVT. So if you have some missing friends or materials that you would like to look at, you can all find this all in the peace station, probably. So in the camp of 46, there was Bill Fredriksson that said in one of the work camps that people thought we were vacationists. Then when we worked, thought that we were paid. And then when we weren't paid, thought that we were first forced labor prisoners. And then they began to understand that we were doing it out of love of, for others. So it wasn't obvious to think that people were just coming to help out of free will. Trying to look at the clock because I have a very bad sense of time. <laughs> Then to show you what we are doing now, because this was, we were cooperating maybe for five years in the beginning, but this created something very big for us. We're maybe one of the oldest voluntary work organizations in Finland. And I would like to introduce a bit what we are doing now and that the themes that we work with aren't actually so different nowadays. So in Service Civil International annually, all the, altogether over a thousand work camps are organized, maybe even more, all around the world in every continent. And so we send thousands and thousands of volunteers abroad to different projects, which are all linked to peace somehow. Uh, SCI also organized long-term volunteer project, which is a new, new thing in style these days, I would suppose. Uh, global seminars, trainings, campaigns with different topics. Now for the last three years we have had a campaign of uh, create a climate for peace. So we're bringing peace questions and environmental issues together in different thematic topics and projects. Um, in 2014, 12 camps were organized in Finland with uh, 121 volunteers. The themes of the camps were anti-racism, refugees and minorities, work with disabled people, children, youth, elderly people, environment and organic farming, culture, art and local history. Not so much construction work, but <laughs> with the same idea of helping people. Uh, during the year 2000, 2014, KVT sent instead of 34, 116 volunteers from Finland to a voluntary work camp abroad, and then 22 long-term volunteers, for example, to Kenya, Uganda, Thailand, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Spain, Macedonia, Kosovo, Ireland, and Croatia, so all over. And KVT members are very actively working with the international, international network, and members are well represented in the committees and working groups. I'm myself in two of them. I'm working with African projects that we have in about 15 different countries in Africa. And now there's a new topic group about ref refugees and asylum seekers. And I'm coordinating that at the moment from here, from all the way from the north of Europe. <laughs> then what is maybe something that we are going towards at the moment. There's a picture of one of our projects with very happy unaccompanied minors that have been seeking asylum from Finland. And we organized a lot of projects, for example, with them. And we have been coordinating a global education action since 2010. Last year, this has been called Awakening Awareness Project. And the aim has been mainly to place refugees and asylum seekers living in Finland to a voluntary camp uh, or other projects that we have been organizing and bring the voice of the Global South to small towns and villages in rural areas and, and of course the camp community because most of the volunteers come from Europe and Asia. Uh, KVT also works regularly in reception centers. So for example, in Helsinki we work in uh, in Punavuor, in the reception center, we're organizing activities for the families who don't know where they may, maybe are and don't know what they could do or where do, could they take their children. So we're trying to take them around Helsinki and organize football matches or 
whatever it is, now we can't stay at the center because it's so crowded. Instead of 200 people, they are 450. So outside activities <laughs> nowadays. And to show, there's another comment from one of our volunteers who was in a reception center in Switzerland in a work camp. So she wrote us that it was ed educative to hear life stories of families who have had to leave their homes because of the war. Especially work with the children gave a new perspective to my own studies and my future work with children. But the whole experience brought depth and re realism to, my, to the way I look at the world around me. So in my point of view, the ideas are pretty similar to how the, how the work camps were started. And to show that not so much has changed, I have some picture, group pictures from different decades. So this is from the very beginning, 1948, Tervola camp, a group picture from there. I don't know if you find some familiar faces, but I think many of you weren't there either. <laughs> then 1990, you can see the change of style. There was a work camp in Vehmer Salmi. And finally, 2011 KVT autumn meeting. We're still many. <laughs> so I think that even though the themes are very different and there is no war at the moment in Europe, not the same, same topic that started the whole work camp movement. War is still an, as a opposite to peace present also in, in Europe. And now we're facing the, the biggest crisis that we're facing is the refugees and asylum seekers who are crowding in Europe. And what, that is also one of our biggest themes today, what we are working with. I just came from Switzerland from the couple of months ago, from the very core heart of the where the SCI movement was born. We had a meeting with uh, different branches of SCI to discuss how we could work with the topic better, and we're sharing ideas. For example, Finland is placing asylum seekers to these work camps with a very positive feedback, and working in the reception centers. So we're trying to create different ways of. Uh, including asylum seekers and also, of course, helping in the beginning through voluntary work. And um, we're planning new activities in this sphere, and I think that it, it is not actually so far away from where we started, and it is very important for this to know from which point we started our work to know uh, and to help creating where we are heading to. And uh, as some of you might be able to calculate already, calculate already. We are also celebrating our, some of our annual celebrations very soon. So next year, it will be 70 years from the first work camp that was held with KVT, which wasn't yet KVT, but however. <laughs> and then the year after, we will be having our 70th cele annual celebration, where of course all of you are welcome. I don't know yet how we are going to exactly celebrate. I'm part of the committee who's planning it, so maybe I will get some new ideas from here. Um, I, would, I have a video, 40 seconds, to show where our volunteers have just mentioned by one word what KVT means to them. And I will warn you, they were very happy when I started filming, that they, but this was take three, so people were getting tired and they wanted to go back to work, <laughs> but they, they were very happy. <laughs> Good food, understanding. It's a traffic in Saigon. It's very useful for everyone. Adriatic Sea. Good food, new ideas. World politics. Friendship. Understanding cultures. Community. Great connections. Cultures. Diversity. Meet new friends. Active citizenship. I love KTC production. A new family. 
um, happiness. <laughs> A lot of new family members. <laughs> Good moments. Peace and love. <laughs> Lovely friends. The last woman is actually living in Rovaniemi, and I'm planning to meet her tomorrow before I go. She has been with her two lovely kids participating in some of our programs. That's one of the themes that we were trying to elaborate with the asylum seekers, that even the single mothers with small children could give their share and participate to the projects. So thank you. I'm free for questions until tomorrow, and I hope that we will <laughs> discuss these matters together too. Thank you.